One such movie is the unconventional Spanish thriller Advantages of Traveling by Train, which is being tipped as a contender for the Best Film Award. Another highly anticipated feature, also in competition, is the French-German co-production Only the Animals, directed by former BAFTA nominee Dominic Moll. It's been called a sophisticated and engrossing mystery. To tell us more about the 32nd edition of the Tokyo Film Festival, Matt Shulai joins me now. Hi, Matt. So um, you've been covering the festival for three years in a row now. So there, I think there is a bit more emphasis on Japanese movies this year. Why do you think this is happening? Yeah, that's exactly right. So I had a chance to speak to festival director Takao Hisamatsu and uh, he told me that Japan is, is really in the spotlight these days. Um, as you may know, this year we have a new emperor who was recently enthroned. Uh, Japan is holding the Rugby World Cup right now. And uh, next year, of course, they'll hold the um, Olympics and Paralympics. And with that, there's, there's been a large uh, rise in the number of people visiting the country as well. So he kind of told me that they felt it was, it was Japan's time to, to really be in the spotlight at this festival. It sounds like they're also embracing the past as well as today. So uh, I'd like to ask you this. Do you think, uh, would you call it a new era in Japanese cultural uh, world this year? I mean, reflecting on um, cinema scene and this festival in particular after the um, uh, new emperor. Well, you know, it's interesting. Um, on the live action side of things, you've got some films this year that are actually looking back to the past, as you said. Um, the opening film, which is playing as we speak, is called Torasang, uh, Wish You Were Here, which is a continuation of a very long-running uh, film franchise, which is beloved by, by uh, Japanese people. Um, but the director is in his 80s. A lot of the cast members are, are very old as well. And in fact, the lead is, uh, ha passed away in the 90s and has been replaced um, with a few digital tricks. So um, looking, looking forward, but also looking back, as you said. Mm -hmm. And I mean, speaking of the lineup of the festival, your name has been a big hit. And I think there is a follow up um, by the same director as well, right? There is, yes. So um, of the five um, recent films, anime films they're showing this year, uh, the, the biggest of them is called Weathering With You, which is the latest film from Makoto Shinkai, who as you noted, directed uh, Your Name. Um, people were wondering whether that could kind of replicate the success of Your Name, which, as you know, is a smash hit. And um, at least in Japan so far, it hasn't quite lived up to, to the Your Name box office, but it's, it's been a smash in its own right. So um, it'll be interesting to see that film uh, with English subtitles and, and have international people uh, here in Japan give, get a chance to see that film. So what else are you excited about in this edition? Well, um, me personally, um, I'm a big anime fan, and they are showing um, a film called Akira, which you may know, it came out 31 years ago, and it takes place in the far-flung future of uh, 2019. So it's a perfect <laughs> film to show this year. Uh, it still holds up. It's got amazing animation. Um, so it'll be amazing to see that on the big screen. Mm -hmm. As far as um, new films, um, there's always a, a great selection of, of um, indie Japanese films films from around the world. Uh, there's a film from Turkey in competition. So I'm just looking forward to kind of popping into the theater and, and seeing what I can see. Okay, as a last note, I mean, there are, uh, the selection counts three Netflix movies, The Scorsese, The Irishman, uh, Marriage Story, and Earthquake Bird. Do you think this is a success for the streaming services, considering the, um, the feud that's going on between Cannes and some other festivals around the world when it comes to Netflix and other streaming services? Yeah, I, I, that's a good point. You know, um, the Tokyo F International Film Festival, they are now in their third um, decade and they're a, a, a highly regarded festival, but they're not quite on the level yet of the European festivals like Cannes or, or maybe Berlin. So I think um, the films that they might uh, be feuding with, uh, I think uh, a, film, a festival like Tokyo would gladly invite to come, to come play. But yes, it is a huge deal for streaming services to have that kind of, um, that kind of uh, being acknowledged by a major film festival. Absolutely. And Japan is definitely a major battlefront uh, when it comes to streaming services. Matt Shulai, have fun there. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me.